Hey guys, it's Noah. How you doing? Good morning. Um, listen, we're going to go into some stuff today. It's going to be fun, okay? If you guys want to find out what really happened to the Georgia Guidestones, watch this video, okay? Um, I'm going to pray and get in this word. We got some new equipment we're testing out. I got like this cool little, it's like a, it's a light on a stand and I got a little thing I can I can go color and look weird and red or white it's kind of cool and the the back already broke on it um there's been a storm this morning man so this I I think it's kicked back from this video but we'll go ahead and we'll pray and get into this word let me adjust that right there that's good all right father we come for you we thank you we praise you we bless you we love you, God. Help me pray, Holy Spirit. We lift this up to you. We dedicate this to you. There's people praying, and there's a part in the Bible where it says, um, Peter says to, to Jesus, he says, uh, no, Lord, I won't let it. He says, get behind me, Satan. You don't have the plans of God. You have the plans of man in your heart. Right now we crucify the flesh. Get behind me, Satan, with your demonic prayers where you don't understand the plans of God. You have the plans of man in your heart. Get behind me, Satan. We cast those prayers out. We break them off over this ministry, over our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we crucify the flesh. Speak through us from the spirit, not from the flesh. Holy Spirit, help me pray and press in. We abstain from all appearances of evil. We thank you. We praise you. We bless your holy name. We we dedicate this to you. I pray uh, uh, just the heavens would be opened up for everybody that would watch this. I bless them for the bride, for the for the bride of Christ. We bless everybody, but God, you you bless who you want to bless, and you don't who you want to don't want to so lord we just lift everybody up i pray peace over everybody i bless their homes i bless them i bless their finances i bless everything in their lives and i pray you do what you want <laughs> we love you we bless you we thank you we praise your holy name in jesus mighty name we pray amen bridle my tongue speak to me from the spirit not from the flesh crucify the flesh Okay, so I'm sorry, I was trying to listen, and listen, when every time I dedicate something to the Lord, when I do something like this, it's much more um, efficient. It's like, uh, and, and he's present, he's present a lot more. Anytime you do something like that, when you dedicate it to God, he's more present, but he doesn't move like when we say, so a lot of times I hear very clearly when I'm praying beforehand over these videos and then it gives me an idea of where he wants me to go. That's why I'm doing that. And when I pray, I like to listen. And um, It's weird. Sometimes I feel like hurried by people when I'm trying to pray. And that's just where I'm at. Like I just listen. You know, I just want to hear what, what God is saying, how he, how he wants to lead whatever's going on. That being said, um, I was in Luke 12 today, and I just want to share a couple of things that stuck out. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, right? The biggest thing that was sticking out to me and that I saw, and this you could take this as a prophetic word or whatever. I, I don't think it's for me. I mean, that closet right there with the sheet hanging over the door for sound deadening. Inside of there is some food stuff, right? It's like emergency supplies. But for people who are trying to hedge it out and like prep and do all this other stuff, you're barking up the wrong tree. I literally, I saw that this morning. I saw that these things are not going to, they're not going to, you, you, you're going to be storing up things for somebody else. Okay. You're going to have 
God'll probably make you tell you to get it all or get rid of it anyways, right? If you're a man of God, if you're not, it's if you're one of these elites that's digging out one of these uh one of these mountains in in the Ozark Mountains, God'll evict you and allow his people to go in there. That's how this is going to work. Like you don't know you you have you think you have power and you have none, right? You're supposed to see things from afar off, but and, and prepare, right? Like the Issachar boys, right? But you don't, you, you really don't have anything else to do but to seek first the kingdom of God and just do what's in front of you, okay? So that's that's the first little thing. Um, because, but God said to him, fool, this night your soul will be required of you. So you're building for somebody else, like straight up. And that's a word for somebody. I, I like saw it in my head. I, and I don't, I have an idea, but I don't really know who this is for. All right. And then the other thing was, was in Luke 12, uh, I had to repent for this guys and pray for my healing and restoration on this. Okay. I, I need help. I, this it says, if we confess our sins one to another, and we pray for forgiveness, we will be healed. So I'm asking you guys to pray for me to be restored. I'm humbling myself. I'm showing you guys what's what's on my plate. But it says, but if a servant says in his heart, and pray for my wife too, okay? Because we've had a hard time. But if that servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat the male and female servants and to eat and drink and be drunk, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in two and appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. And that servant who knew his master's will and did not prepare himself or do according to his will shall be beaten with many stripes. But he who did not know yet committed things deserving of stripes shall be beaten with few. That part stinks, man, but it's the truth, right? It's like, don't don't mess with your, your brother. He's dumb. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's an idiot. I expect more from you, right? Like, oh, okay. Uh, for everyone, <laughs> for everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required. And to whom much has been committed of him, they will ask the more. All right. That's it, right? I mean, it doesn't really need to be it's pretty self-explanatory right so i just repented like i get frustrated man i get frustrated and i get irritated when people are dumb and they don't listen and they don't abide and they don't obey god right i've known a i knew a guy who he was smart but he intentionally did not read the bible because he was afraid of finding out more like, like that's what he did he didn't want to be responsible for more so he just intentionally just avoided it it's like oh yeah god I, you know god's cool and all of that and he'd go right as harley and you know he believed in jesus he had the baptism of the holy spirit too i mean he wasn't living a happy life right but this this is like the mentality of some people like they don't want more because they don't want to be responsible for more and they know that they're responsible for what they know okay um, that being said, uh, yeah, I don't want to, I didn't beat the male, and I don't have male and female servants, right? Maybe my wife would say something different, but no, I don't. Um, but I, it, it's just like being, being rude. I, I, I'm seeing another guy too that I know and he started drinking and all this other stuff and it's like. don't do it you know it, it, it's basically letting off the gas and 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 going back to your laurels okay so just if you guys are there repent with me let's do it together and let's recommit on anything that we need to do Ooh, let me see my stuff i just kicked on me all right let's recommit all right um is that better okay I didn't know that, that was, the leg was underneath there. And then the last thing I saw was hypocrites. You can turn the face in the sky of the earth 
but how it is how is it you do not discern the times this is a rebuke from the lord for being uh for not discerning the times right you need to repent for this i there's other people i know who bury their head in the sand and they don't want to know this stuff because it's too hard for them to uh, uh, survive or whatever. Pray for God's grace to be able to do it. But this is a rebuke from the Lord right here. It's uh, Luke 12, 56. Hypocrites. He says, you're not discerning of the time. If you don't know what's going on with Israel right now, with the end time stuff there. If you don't, if you don't know these things because you're being whatever reason right this is a rebuke repent come back to the lord this stuff is real listen the lord told me that there's several people including churches and stuff like that that are willfully overlooking my teachings on what's going on and others that are, are getting the same thing uh you know what it was there's a Weezer song. If you want to destroy my sweater, whoa. He talks about like pulling the sweater and it as he walks away and his whole sweater disappears, right? And what that is, is they're afraid if they pull on that thread, everything's going to fall apart. But that shows where their doctrine is. That shows what these guys actually think. Like if they're so afraid... That if they if they if they do this, the house of cards will fall. They know they're on a house of cards. Like there's no other way around it, right? So these are your churches, guys. And I'm telling you, the say at the Lord, this is what he was telling me. I got um oh I I did I I watched a video and I said this is what I'm getting. Guys, sometimes when it's a stressful uh situation, it you know, I can get you can you can you can get a lot of different uh things on it right but what it was was it was the it was the pre-trib rapture stuff and i don't i don't know that that's the truth man he, he like after i made those video that video about that he sat me down four or five days in a row and going over the same stuff he said read the all of it discourse read this read this read this read this and at the end of it i'm like I can't say that, man. I was like, I was hoping that my kids and my wife would be out of here and stuff, right? And that the China dream, that that's what it was. Why, that's why they weren't there. But I don't think that's the case. I think I might have been on a mission trip and they were at home or something. And I was trying to get back to them or separate. But I don't know, guys. And, and I'm not going to... God hasn't told me. And he hasn't told me. And he told me why he hasn't told me. He tells us that... He doesn't tell us... A definitive answer on something like this so we're always ready that's why because if he told us yeah you're gonna get raptured out then people would do exactly what he said here they'd be eating drinking beating the slaves right or their servants that's the slaves in the king james version right but that's it right so um take that to the lord now here it is when when i when i left texas Show me the stuff that's important in Jesus' name. When I left Texas, we limped over to Missouri. I had Irby with me. Irby was with me and my wife and my daughter. We went to Missouri. We got we had this big old like house on fruit farm. And it was this big, like five acre house. It was, you know, almost it was like 3,500 square feet. It was a big house. It had like a sauna in the in the basement and stuff. I stayed down in the basement. Like Howard Hughes locked in a room for like a month because I was just so sick from when I when I leaving Texas cuz that, that battle took everything out of me. This this one with Laughlin was tough, guys. That's why I just got done with this. That was the hardest 7-day fast I've ever done. I do them all the time. That was the hardest one I've ever done. And it was cuz the stuff that we confronted out there or that I confronted. Um, but when I was done with Texas, like I, that was the greatest evil I've ever felt was when we were in Texas, whatever's there. The little side note, Elon Musk is like an, not even an hour away from where we were. 
It was like 40 minutes, 45 minutes away. Everybody's talking about these like flashing lightning and stuff that doesn't look, it doesn't even look real. The entire time we were out there, we saw that flashing lightning. That's the entire time. And it was because we were praying and I was sent out there to stand the gap. And I know what was there. I'm not going to go into it, but know this also, just north of there, so Elon Musk was like closer to Austin area and then just north of there was the five red heifers that were bred for the third temple in Israel that, that were sent over there like 45, 50 minutes from where I lived. So right there, right? Some other weird stuff too that happened right before Elon Musk went out there. They saw a dragon in the sky over Texas and they have it on record like go look up the Tyler dragon I think it's what it's called go look those videos up dude there's like several people that took all over the place that took videos of this event they heard this thing screeching in the air and that type of lightning that you see that's what we saw every single day we were out there it rained almost every single day um, this happened right and then when we went to Missouri it rained so much that Lake Tanny Como and all this other stuff filled up. It almost flooded out the, the town of, uh, not Hollister, what is that? Um, Forsyth, like just past there, past Branson, like the town of Forsyth was almost completely underwater because it rained every single day, right? We see all kinds of weird weather. We see all like all this stuff. <clears throat> um, but yeah, that go moving on. So I go to... Missouri, it sucked. I hated it. And we got pressured every single day to, to get out and go on this mission or go on this, uh, this like this prayer journey over America, right? The Lord taught me all this stuff for a reason so that I would go out and do it. And then finally, like I just submitted to his will because I was just tired and I didn't, I didn't want to go, but I did it. I'm like, and we lifted it up to God that day. And I told, I think I made another video about this, but it said Applegate Drive. And like, I said, my wife was like, you just need to go do this. I'm like, okay, fine, we'll, we'll do it. And there was another, a, a guy I know. And he was like, dude, he's like, when I was in prison, like if, until I just did what I had to do, it never went in, it never went away, right? And I was like, okay, so, and then right when we lifted it up, like the door ding dong hit. And we got a package that said Applegate Drive. And before that, the word Applegate, I got, I kept getting that for like a month. I kept hearing Applegate, Applegate. And then when I finally looked it up, it was on Urban Dictionary. And somebody had written in a thing about church corruption. And, and that that's what Applegate means. It's something about like corrupt church pastors and stuff and people can change this stuff all the time right but i knew that that's what it was meant somebody went in there they didn't even know and they they, they did that so we get a, a box and it was called applegate drive so we went out in the first we knew we were supposed to go to pensacola right and so i went we we headed basically first we went to go see my father-in-law um and that's when i went to try to see my dad and we were five hours, four hours, a couple hours away. Like we weren't very far. We were way up in Northern uh, Idaho by, by the Washington border, right? And I didn't get to see my pop, but we, uh, we got done there and then we headed back down to Florida and we stayed in Pensacola and Daphne, Alabama. That's where I got led to the, the movie set of Jesus Revolution and I prayed over that. Um, and we saw all kinds of really, really cool, crazy miracle signs and wonders. We saw like, you know, crazy stuff. And then it's crazy too, but like where we stayed the majority of that time was a, was a, a giant land preserve that was owned by this high level Luciferian. And the guy would like roll around on his tractor in like overalls and stuff like that. The Lord told me what he, who he was, what he was and everything. Like the first, cause I was like, oh, maybe I can go ask this guy for work. He's like, no, he's a Mason. Don't do it. You don't want to work for that guy. I was like, oh, okay. 
But when we were there, like on the swamp at this place, we heard the craziest thing. We heard they're watchers, guys. They get out on paths. We heard all kinds of stuff. We heard animals like screaming in the night. All night, one night, a bird chirped like, bah, 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 bah. But when we got down there and I prayed over this area in the swamp, everywhere we would go, like my daughter's name is Daphne, we would see daffodils. And like, then I don't even think they grow there. They're not even native to, to that part of of uh florida right but we go there and daffodils started blooming in this like nature preserve that was owned by this guy he had like four rv spots and it was a nature preserve that was there it had like fresh spring water it was a really cool place but this guy he was one of those guys who he 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 doesn't listen to anybody unless he's interested about what you have to say which I understand that to an extent because I'm kind of the same way. But he just kind of tunes everybody out. And I was talking to him. He was like, and he just talk at you, not with you. And then, but like I told him some things about like uh, the Anasazi and stuff like that. And as soon as I did, he like perked up. He was like, oh, oh, like that's good information. Like he hadn't gotten that before. But all the other stuff that I talked about. And I mean, this is stuff that normal people don't know about. He was like, uh, like, like he already knew it and he knew it was true, right? So this guy's a multi, multi, who knows how much money, buku, buku, daddy warbucks. But he like goes out there and drives his tractor because he's just one of those guys, right? High level Freemason. He does like expeditions and stuff like that. I don't want to give too much information on this, but he's a big ph philanthropist for for science stuff, right? And for uh, archaeology and all this other stuff. And, like, I didn't pray anything weird over this guy. I just prayed that stuff would get exposed if there's stuff there. Whatever it is, right? That's all. I'm like, you know, I'm tr I try to navigate this real, real safe. But, like, I loved Florida. I did not want to leave Florida. I wanted to buy a house down there. I thought it was awesome. Like, I had so much fun down there in in that area I love the south the people in the south are just they're so gracious and they're good people and the food is good um you know it's just a good place man there's a lot of there's a lot of I don't know I I went to an all-black church when I was down there too like I, I was the only white guy that was in the church I felt like Forrest Gump and I don't, I'm just, I'm comfortable around black people. I grew up with a lot of black folks and I loved it, man. And I, it was, it was a different experience though. It's not like here. It's not like anybody, anywhere else in the nation. People have genuine hospitality and they're good. They're just good people. They love kids down there, all kinds of stuff, right? So I was happy and you could drive down and go get, fish at the fish market if you wanted to like it, the the freshest fish you've ever had come, coming in off the gulf right so we were down there and then like but every day in the back of my mind i was getting pressured like go do this go do this go do this go do this you're not done yet and i didn't want to go and then literally every door closed down there like at towards the end and like we got this old drunk guy that was at one of the, at, at the RV park, we were staying at the swamp, like came after my wife and he started like manifesting a demon and I smashed him. I punched him like two or three times in the face. He was all jacked up. And uh, I put him down and the cops came and they were like, man, he's just, he deserved it, man. I'm like this, he, he shouldn't do that, right? And um, so then we got driven out of there and then like, we go to this other place and for no reason, like the entire place like turned on us. Like it was the craziest thing you've ever seen. But this happens like when God, when the graces removed from a situation, it's because God is pushing, pushing you to go do something else. It's like Jesus being driven into the wilderness by the Holy Spirit, right? So that happened. And then we got, we like every door shut. We literally didn't have anywhere else to stay down there. And I'm like, dang. And every day I knew I was supposed to go on this Applegate drive. I knew I was supposed to keep going. I knew, you know, everything else. And he gave me a destination. And he was telling me 
my first spot was the Georgia Guidestones, you know. And I'm there and I'm all frustrated because all this stuff, you know, within like a week or two, like this place that was really awesome, like turned on us, right? And I'm hearing this go, go, go. And then finally I'm just like, fine, I'll go, you know, I'll go, I'll do it. I said, but if I go to the Georgia Guidestones, I want them to be a sm uh, like a smoking heap like that. And I was like, I don't want to see those demonic Luciferian things anymore. I want them done. I want them destroyed. And he said, you have it. Just go do what I tell you to do. That's what the Lord said. I said, all right. So we packed up. And I tell you what, like my wife and I traveled for a year in our camper and everything else. The most we would ever cover in one day would be... 150 miles tops like that's tops right somehow like and and i didn't plan this i didn't look at the map i didn't or the time or anything like that i did i didn't know any of that stuff i had no idea that this was in this is how perfect god's timing is right but when we left and we embarked on this we we went all the way from uh, I believe we were in Daphne, Alabama at that time, but it was either Pensacola or Daphne. They're only like 30 minutes apart from where we were at. And we took off and we drove eight hours straight. Like I've never covered that much ground. And I don't know how we did it. We just did it. Like we went straight there. But what the crazy thing is, is that was the first night of Passover. We ended up at the Georgia Guidestones in the first night of Passover. And this was, oh gosh, was this 2021 or 2022? I got to go look at our calendar. I, it was 2022. It had to be, right? I don't know. I'll look it up. I'll put it in the comments on when this was. It was, the, it was right before the year that they got blown up, right? Okay. So... I ended up there and it was right at sundown. So that's when the Hebrew, the, the start of the day is at sundown. And it was on the sundown of the start of the Hebrew Passover. No kidding, right? And I didn't plan this anything like that. The door, uh, oh, the Lord had me right the door. I said, it's kind of weird. The door. The Lord had me right on a, on a plate, like a little plastic plate. I wrote something to the effect of, and I don't remember exactly, he gave me what to write, but he, basically it was something to the effect of like, repent, believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, um, renounce this stuff. The wrath of God abides on anybody who tampers with this, right? And I just put like some tape, like some little scotch tape, and I sticky taped it. And we got to the Georgia Guidestones, and, uh, and if you've ever seen that, they're all... There's cameras all over. They even have some guys in plain clothes that I'm pretty sure are armed guards. They they were. Like my wife, I didn't even notice them, but my wife was saying that. There was three guys there, and they they were like distracted. And all I did is I got out of the car, I walked up and I slapped the plate on there. And I and I and I prayed real quick. I said, God, I lift it up to you. And I walked away. And I, I waved at the cameras, right? They all know who I am anyways. I waved at them, I smiled at them and stuff like that because it really irritates them that they're not in control and they don't have power that they thought they did, right? And so I walk I walk back and I get in my truck and we drive away and I'm looking in the rear view mirror like waiting for the smoke, like, oh, it's gonna go down, it's gonna go down and nothing happened. And I was like, what the heck? Like you told me like, you promised me, Lord, like you said, this thing will be smoking rubble. Like, and I'm waiting for it and nothing happened. And I'm like, gosh, dang it. Like, what the heck, man? I'm a false prophet. Oh, and so, so we go, we get in the, in the truck and we drive the rest of the way. We go all the way up to New York. That's when that stuff happened. I, I mentioned it real quick earlier before. Um, but these same people that are behind all this stuff, this is where we get a lot of this interference, right? But they can't do anything. They can't touch us. They have to play by the rules too, right? Everybody has to kind of play by the rules and they, and everybody kind of knows that. So 
we drive all the way up. We get to New York. We get. I, ha I took like a thousand dollar hit in one day on my camper. Like we had a little like an accident because we were like running. I was doing a fast and I was like getting ready to break the fast and stuff like that. We went into. We were on the border of like New York and New Jersey. And there's all kinds of stuff going on in New York, if you guys don't know, in the Finger Lakes area. The Vatican makes all of the wine for communion in the Finger Lakes area. There is, he's saying that's a different discussion. You guys need to go look at what they put into that stuff, okay? There's a bunch of kids that go missing in uh, all over the United States, and they, there's there's all kinds of stuff with the Finger Lakes region. It's really wicked. Uh, just go look into it, okay? There's I can give you resources that you guys can go look into this, and you can you can get to the truth if you scratch the surface, right? So we go. I took like a, a thousand dollar hit, and I'm like, I'm done. Like we gotta go, right? And I prayed. And I was like, Lord, I'm done. Like we were supposed to go to Rhode Island to go see it because that's where my dad was from, and just finish out this trip. We were going to go to Maine and, you know, have some lobster and be done with it. And we never made it. But I was just tired. I was whooped after the, all, the, all this stuff I'd been through. So we drove down, we drove back to Missouri and we posted up at, um, not Taney Como, but one of the lakes up there. I forget the two, two lakes. There's two big lakes. Maybe it is Taney Como. I don't know. It's the big one, not the, the river lake, but the big one. And we were right next to our storage unit at this little thing. When we got there, the guy accused me of like backing up his stuff. Like just crazy demonic stuff that, that comes out. And, and a lot of these people are Christians. Like that's what's crazy. Like the Christian demons come out more than anybody else, right? People who think they're doing right and they're not. They're just, they're, they're ignorant. Okay, so we stayed there for a little bit and it got so hot and I was like, I got to go back to Arizona. I'm going to Northern Arizona. This is my home. It's nice and cool. If I got to be in this camper, um, I had to go set up for that big job that I was doing in Flagstaff anyways for the, for the colleges. So I was going to go back and plan everything, get everything ready. I picked up my equipment and we went back and this was only, I don't know, like, we can look on the calendar. We were there on Passover night, the start of it. And then from the, the day that these things were blown up, right? That day that those things were blown up, I was back in Arizona. That was the day I got back. We went to Williams, Arizona. Weird stuff happened there too. But we went to Williams, Arizona, and we set up camp. And that day that I get back in my home state, those things get blown up. And the Lord did that so that I would not be associated with it in any way, shape, or form because it had nothing to do with it. I just went and declared something and prayed over it, right? And that was it. That's why I got investigated by the FBI. They had to clear me of any kind of wrongdoing in this, like that I wasn't associated with any of that stuff. And I was exonerated by that stuff, right? Like they know, they, they already know all this stuff. The FBI agent knew who I was. He knew all that stuff. Right. He was actually, he was a nice guy. He wasn't, he wasn't a bad guy. You know, he's just, he's doing his job and stuff, but the Lord had a word for him too. When, when we were talking, um, but yeah, so we ended up back there that happened and I was like, Oh my gosh, this is nuts. Right. And it was, and it literally happened so that I wouldn't be implicated in it in any way, shape or form. There's an old movie, um, frailty with Matthew McConaughey it's really good if you haven't seen it like it's a creepy movie it's not for kids but Matthew McConaughey it's good just go watch it but like that that's that it's very accurate man except for the fact that you know his dad was killing these bad people like we don't do that we don't have to raise a finger like we don't have to do that if if you're really anointed you just pray and it happens Derek Prince did a bunch of this stuff. Derek Prince prayed and, and saved Ronald Reagan's life. If you go look into that, there was a curse that happened with Ronald Reagan getting shot. 
and Derek Prince in his prayer ministry broke that off. Just a couple of people. It was like him and his wife and like a couple other people. And they interceded. They fasted and interceded when the Lord revealed that to them. And they prayed and broke that curse off. And that's why when Ronald Reagan got shot, it was really close to his heart, but he didn't, he didn't die. That was a curse that happened every 20 years. And it was from a desecration that happened um, from Native Americans. It was something America did to Native Americans. And it was a curse pronounced. And when they prayed and interceded, they, they broke that off. And it was like the last little warning shot. That's why it was really close to killing him, but it didn't kill him. That's what happens. When, when God sends a prophet, he, there's nobody or no, nothing can get in the way of that. And it freaks them out because when there's a prophet sent against a nation, this is what happens. Okay, this is the kind of stuff that happens. Anyways, we get back. Um, that's what happened with the Georgia Guidestones. I'm going to link a couple people that were curious about this, this subject or something like that. There was one guy with the channel. I don't agree with all of his stuff. He's out there on a lot of his stuff. It's bad doctrine, all that other stuff, but he wanted to know, um, what I got, I don't know how they were destroyed. Okay. I'm just, I, what I got. Lord, what, what happened? I, I pray for wisdom. I You know what? Like, There's footage that this guy had, though, where it was accurate, where like something hit it. It was like a, like a particle beam, like some kind of thing, and that they made up this whole front story about somebody blowing it up. It was either that or the thing was cursed after I left there. And they leveled it. They had they blew it up themselves and leveled it, right? Whatever it was, I don't really care. What I do care about is the Lord honored what I asked him to do because we we went out by faith and, and, and followed through with what he asked us to do. And he asked us to go do this. We did this entire prayer ministry to go break off areas bondage. And what this whole thing is about is church restoration. He's tired of his churches. He's, he's angry. He's angry with the American church. The African church, he's, he's pleased with. But these people have gone through sacrifice and suffering. And that's why they're on fire for the Lord. Americans have squandered their gift. They've squandered the, the, the gift of going to church. They use it for, for selfish gains. Um, every single one. They've all strayed. This is a godless nation. It's bad. We're in a bad area and this thing is going down. Okay. And only the people, the only, only the holy remnant are going to survive. And this is what's coming soon to American soil. And I've been telling you guys this for a long time. Go to Luke 12 and read that. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness that all else will be added to you. Because if you're not doing this and actually living this thing out, like it says in Luke 12, you're going to be one of those people that's smoking flax smoking heap going up right that's that's just the truth right there's more there's way more stuff guys that's going on behind the scenes that I'm, i haven't talked about yet but this is one of the things that we did when we were out there a lot of the stuff i can't even talk about because people would think it was nuts right but it's the truth this stuff is real this is how this is happening and um i genuinely believe that we are in the great trip. I think my timeline with the daily, that video, the daily is accurate uh, outside of the rapture stuff. Everything in there lines up. It's too perfect. Mainstream churches and stuff don't want to look into this stuff because they don't want to, they don't want their house of cards to fall. Okay. But if you trust in the Lord, and you believe in the name of the Lord Jesus, and you seek him with your whole heart, he will get you through whatever you got to go through, okay? And he'll see you through. He'll line everything up perfect. You don't have to plan for it. You don't have to do anything like that. You got to live by faith, okay? And faith at this point is a knowing, right? Like for me, when it really changed, I already knew God was real. What changed with me was realizing he was for me, okay? Holding on long enough like Jacob until he would bless me knowing he was for me. And a lot of people don't make it past that. And praise God that I saw hell 
so I had the the desire to hold on to him through all the crazy stuff I went through because it was bad. It was crazy. Like the, the, the attacks, the mental trauma, all that other stuff that I went through is just more than, I, there's no way. There's no way. The stuff that I, if we've done these exploits for the kingdom, imagine the, 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 the tough, rough, hard times that we've been through. The other thing is too, is like, sometimes you got family members and stuff that have gone through horrible things like this that don't even realize why they're going through this stuff. It's like Jesus's brothers and stuff, right? Like they didn't, they had no idea that they, like Joseph and Mary had to get up. They had to go and run because they were killing all the firstborn sons and stuff. So there's people who have a high anointing or a high call on their life and the people around them get run run down too but they have no idea and because of their own doubt and unbelief they don't even understand i know there's a man that i know who has a very high call in his life and because of that he's been beat down by every area of his life and he's had issues with his wife and all kinds of stuff but it's because of that so you know god doesn't use perfect people guys god uses normal people so that his glory is greater right and he wants other people to know that this is the type of people i use he uses the weak things of the world to confound the wise the strong okay this is why okay god bless you guys have a good day